few days since I've done this, and I'm so excited to be with you again. Um, let me just... Hey guys, it's been a few days since I've done this. I'm so excited to be with you again. Forgive me if that's kind of um, redundant, because I wasn't sure if it was working. So, let me just, put this where I can see you guys. Um, Oh boy, it's, let me say, it's been a roller coaster of emotions for me uh, these past few days. Um, what, some days I'm feeling emotionally okay, like I can do this, and some days I'm feeling not depressed, but a bit down, like, well, like, Everything is just um, emotionally catching up with me. And I was thinking of you guys, too. Um, that you guys may be feeling the same way as I am. Like, one day you're like, okay, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And one day you're like, oh my god, this is about to kill me. But I'm here to say... Um, that nothing can kill you that you don't let kill you. And when I say kill you, I don't mean physically kill you. I don't mean um, that you're physically dying. I mean emotionally, spiritually, financially. Um, nothing can kill you that you don't let kill you. Um, the decision to emotionally and spiritually die is yours and even if your finances take a hit your reaction would make all the difference i know things look bleak right now but god wants me to tell you that he loves you he loves you with an everlasting love and I know there's a lot of theories out there that this is a prediction that the world is coming to an end and whatever. Now, I, I don't know what God's wa wanting to do and whatever, um, but I do know whatever he decides to do, um, it's going to be in the end for our good because the bible says that all things work together for the um for the good for those who are who love the lord and are called according to his purpose so you are called according to his purpose he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light and he wants me to tell you today that, that calling is still sure. It doesn't matter if Corona is trying to take you out um, physically, financially, emotionally. Um, but that calling that he called you uh, from darkness into marvelous light is still sure. Is still sure. And your vocational calling is still sure. And your relational calling is still sure. I was thinking of this whole thing of calling. Uh, and I was thinking that you don't only... I heard a preacher say, you don't only have one calling. Um, but you have several callings, and, and he didn't, the preacher didn't say this, but the Lord began to minister to me that um, each and every one of those callings have a different purpose. So you might be called to be a, 
a business leader and you might also be called to be a mom. You might also be called to be, you know, a sister, a daughter and all that. And all those different callings make up different aspects of you. So in this, in this coronavirus, strengthen your heart that your calling is still sure. And the main calling that we all have is um, from darkness into his marvelous light. And he wants me to tell you that that calling is still is still sure. He hasn't changed his mind about you. He hasn't changed his mind about his love for the world. He hasn't changed his mind about anything like that. And he just wants uh, me to tell you that uh, you are so precious to him. And there is nothing he won't do for you. You are so, so precious to him, beloved. And there is nothing that he won't do for you. There is nothing that he won't give you if it's in his will. If it's what he wants for you, there is nothing he won't give you. You don't have to beg, borrow, or steal for it. He has just got enough to just provide. He's making a way in the darkness. He wants me to tell you that in this coronavirus season, he's making a way in the darkness. And he, he will he will receive his glory at the end of this. And he is making a way in the darkness. He is making a way so we know that he is God and there is none else. He sometimes uses trouble to teach us that he is God. Because sometimes when we're so self-sufficient in this side, this society, we forget that he is indeed God. And what this has forced us to do more than anything, I believe, is just to depend on him. I know there are stuff that I'm praying for right now that I'm depending on him for. And I know that he's going to come through in some way, shape, or form because he's God and he always has his heart on me and he he wants me to tell you that he always has his heart on you too his heart is for you beloved he loves you he's for you You don't have to struggle alone. You've been struggling alone, trying to raise those kids alone, trying to do this thing alone, trying to find all this stuff alone um, for too long. And he's saying, you don't have to struggle alone. He's saying, number one, I'm here. Take, Let me take the burden. And we... We have a hard time as people letting God take our burdens because we think that we have to um, do it ourselves. Here's what most of us think. God is there for the spiritual stuff like praise and up, like worship, but he doesn't care if I have grocery money, whatever. That has nothing to do with God. That's what most of us think, so that's why unintentionally we struggle alone. We worship, we we do all that stuff, but we still struggle to get our needs met and we don't depend on God for those needs because we don't think he cares whether we can feed our kids. We don't think he cares whether we're, you know, whether we're, um, whether we can pay our bills, whether we can um, get the money that we need to or whatever. But he wants me to tell you today, you are a cherished child. 
and he loves you and there is nothing that is going on in your life right now that a he doesn't see and b he doesn't he doesn't love you for just soldiering on but he doesn't want you to just soldier on anymore like it doesn't hurt just get things done he wants you to just go to that place where it hurts go to that place where lord i can't take these kids anymore or lord i can't take these bills anymore or lord i can't take being in the house anymore help me send help he wants you to go to the places that previously you were afraid to go to. He wants you to go to those places so he can heal those places. He wants to heal the world, not only of Corona, but he wants to heal the world of these, these emotional places that we've been hiding from him. We've been hiding from God for too long and he wants to heal those places he wants to heal those places that we've been afraid to, to um, confront. He wants to go down to where it emotionally hurts and heal those places. And the reason, like, time by ourselves quite often means um, that we have to be alone with our own struggles, with our own demons. And he's saying, while you're in the house, don't just keep yourself busy with Netflix or whatever. Go down to those places that you've been ignoring, uh, whether it be your kids, whether it be your, you know, uh, financial spending, whether it be your eating, whether it be whatever. He's like, go down to those difficult places and let him start to restore and heal you. He so wants to restore and heal the world. We have no idea. I think when, when in regular life we're so busy, it's easy to ignore ourselves. But when we are alone with ourselves, when, we, when no stores are open, when we have to be inside with each other, it, and it forces us to confront real issues. It forces us to confront the shopping habit that we have. It forces us to confront our drinking. And the Lord wants to you to confront it and not ignore it anymore. You've been ignoring whatever it is for too long and he wants to heal it. And now that you're in the house alone, you're not working or whatever, he says, it's time to get real with me. It's time to confront that issue. I want it out of your life. You've been struggling with it for, for too long and it's not of me. I He says, I've been prodding you forever to stop shopping. I've been prodding you forever to spend more time with your kids. I've been prodding you forever to stop, um, to stop watching pornography or to stop watching that show that has you addicted to take you away from me. And now that you have the time, I want to confront that issue. I want you to be healed from that issue. I don't want that issue to stop you anymore. There is so much that I need to say to you. And this and this time of quarantine is a time for me to say it. And it may be hard to say to hear at some points, but remember beloved, I love you. He's saying, I love you. And I've sent 
Rachel today to help as a most peace to pour my love on you. Yes, Lord. And that was him speaking. Um, I am just so honored that he used me in such a profound way. And I declare right now that there is healing in his wings. I declare that there is restoration right now. I declare that there is healing for whatever's broken. I declare that there is oh well, she has a measure. Salvation for whoever needs it, for whoever wants it. God, I thank you for using me today for whatever you want to do. Father, I praise you, I lift you up and worship you. And he wants me to speak also to on the um, Christians who go to church but don't really know the Lord. He, he wants to know you so much. Like, you go to church Sunday after Sunday, but have no idea who he really is. And don't let him get down to your character. Don't let him invade your life. So it's like God's up here and we're down here. But he wants to invade your character today. He wants to invade your life today because he loves you so much. Let him in. He won't hurt you. I know other people have hurt you. And you've heard about the relationship with Christ. You've heard about the difference between religion and relationship because you've been going to church forever, but never have really taken it in. This time of quarantine, he wants to do away with religion and into relationship. And how you do, do into relationship is basically just say, God, I need you. Whatever that means, I need you. And a lot of preachers do what's called an invitation prayer or a sinner's prayer. But me, um, I believe that he doesn't want to hear my words. He wants to hear your words in this moment. So pour your heart out to the Lord. I don't need to say what you need to say. I have my own stuff to say to the Lord, but he wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear uh, hear your needs. He wants to hear that you receive him into your life. He wants to hear that your, what your thoughts are on him. Um, I have to pray to him for myself. And so do you. And some people watching me may find prayer a little daunting, like just talking to the ceiling alone, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. When you're in your house, when you're whatever, you don't have to pray a certain way. Just talk to the Lord. Just say, Lord, I don't, whatever you're feeling, just say, I don't know if you're real, but if you are, come into my life or whatever, ever. Or you can say, God, I know you're real. So just come into my life and fill me afresh. And he will. I really believe that the Lord is trying to fill the world afresh by stopping everything. I believe that we were too busy with our lives and the Lord is trying to fill us afresh with his love, his grace, his understanding. And he's also saying, no time for condemnation. This is not, Corona wasn't to condemn the world. This is, this is, this is a time that God is showing his love through the world. Um, through Corona, I've never seen so many people um, just 
uh, love on people, be kind to people, all of that. And I think that this virus around the world has taught us to be kind to people, to love people. I've never seen so many companies putting themselves out and doing what they can do to um, help people out. And I think that's what the world needs now. It was, um, I think it was a Diana Ross song that said, What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that is just too little love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of what the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. I just really believe that after this, and there will be an after. This won't last forever, but the world will look different after Corona. But I think after this, will will value and treasure each each other more. We'll value and treasure our services. When I log on to Instacart and see. Um, okay, be, be there at 12.30 or whatever, I'll be so grateful. Um, like, you know, we took so much for granted before Corona, and I think that after Corona, we won't take as many things for granted. We, we won't take people for granted. We won't take as many as many opportunities for granted. And I think we'll more live to help each other, to love each other. To I think we'll have more grace for each other after this. And I think this is teaching us a lot how to be safe in society and uh, all that. But I think that it is bringing a wealth of love and understanding and strategy to the world that we haven't previously had. And I think it is time for us, past time for us to love each other hard, to, em to uh, emotionally embrace each other hard to let people know that we're there for them to let people know that we love them to let people know that we care and to not take anything for granted i think that lord is so gracious to us even in this time if you look around uh you'll see the little miracles that he is performing in this time and he wants you to see the little miracles that he is performing in this time and he wants you to embrace the little miracles everything may not be as it was and probably will never be again but but things will be a god kind of different after corona things will be a God kind of different. I believe he's using Corona to make us more loving, make us more caring, 
make us more considerate of each other. Since Corona broke out about like a month or two ago, I have heard of very few other murders uh, where I am in Toronto. I think Corona has made us more compassionate, uh, more loving towards each other. It takes tragedy sometimes to do two things. First of all, bring strategies of what we don't have and be, make us appreciate what we do have. And I think that after this, we will develop strategies and we'll be grateful for what we do have. And I think um, tragedy also lets us know what we're missing, what we're missing as a government, what we're missing as a society, what we, what we need to put in place in case a pa pandemic like this happens again. I think that uh, tragedy makes us aware of what we're missing. And I believe that the world won't be the same, but it will be a, a God kind of different and a new kind of normal that God will show his glory through. I've said this before. Um, I think God is getting ready to have the greatest move in the world through this coronavirus. Um, I believe that people are looking for hope. Therefore, God is using this horrible sickness to bring him glory. God didn't cause it, life caused it, but all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord. And I believe that there is going to be such a weight of glory, such um, people flocking to the house of God like you wouldn't believe. Um, a lot of churches are still running um, online, and I heard one preacher say um, the first week that they went online, he was preaching uh, to an empty church, but when he got done preaching, um, the, one of the people said that he was preaching to more people in one service that was then was in a national stadium. People are looking for hope. People are looking for Jesus in this time. And people are more open to uh, hear, hearing about Jesus and learning about Jesus. And I'm so uh, grateful to God for the people he's put around me, that the people that risk their lives every day to come to work every day to uh, look after me. I'm so grateful for each and every one of them. And and we need to be grateful for our family and friends that we've taken for granted. I'm certainly grateful for my sisters and my mom and uh, my dad and my family. And let's not be Let's not be hesitant to tell the people that we care, that we, that we care about them. And let's just love each other so much. When we give love, um, we can receive more of what God has to offer. When we, when we hold back on God's love and, and suffer in bitterness and callousness and, oh, God, why me? We hold back on what God wants to do. Let all that go and embrace what God wants to do through you. Um, I'll see you guys later. Take care.
Bye now. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little love. What in the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. And don't forget to join me tomorrow on Facebook and YouTube for episode 20 of Storytime Sunday. Bye. Here it is. I got it. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Storytime Sunday, episode 20. Bye. Bye.